This is ridiculous. I can't believe this actually works. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. I'm in the process of getting ready for Hamvention that's coming up in less than two weeks. And one of the things I want to accomplish this year is I want to carry a fast and light loadout for my radios. I want to reduce as much weight as possible, but still have all of the functions that I might need while we're at the show. Now, my primary means of communications is going to be two meters. So basically an HT is going to take care of that for us. And while there's probably not a good chance that I'm going to need an HF radio, well, the probability is not zero. So I definitely want to take one with me. But like I said, I want to keep this loadout as light as possible. So let me show you guys what I've come up with. Now, let's see if we can get this done before the rain kicks back up. All right, so this is the bag that I'm going to be carrying. Uh, it is a very lightweight sling bag, and this will be able to handle a radio, uh, some extra batteries, and my camera kit. So this is it. Now, what's inside? There's going to be three different HTs inside of it. Let's take a quick peek at that. First, right on top, we've got a telescopic antenna, and I'm going to blame this one on Josh with HRCC because he's the one that suckered me into buying this after I watched one of his videos. So you guys aren't the only ones that uh, he ends up costing money to. All right, let's take a look at the first radio. My primary is going to be the D75. This thing will handle everything that I need while I'm at Hamvention. The primary thing is going to be two meter voice and APRS. So I will end up connecting this to my Android phone so that I've got uh, easy access to APRS messages. And then the other side of it will stay locked in on the voice frequency that me and the other YouTubers use while we're at these shows. Now, just in case this one has an issue, and by the way, guys, it's going to take two batteries, the stock batteries, to get me through a day. I understand that, and that's okay. Now, should something happen to this, or maybe I need to use this as a digipeter because this is the only rig I've got that will allow me to use it as a digipeter. So should something happen to this, it's going to take two radios to replace this one. So if I completely deplete the batteries with the D75 or just something happens to it, or I want to use it as a digipeter, the VX6 is going to be my go-to radio for voice. I like this one. It's submersible, so you don't have to worry about it getting wet. It has all day battery life on a single battery. So that's the reason this one is always my choice for voice communications. And if I'm having to run the VX6 for voice, then I'm going to use the BTEC UV Pro for everything APRS related. Again, I'll connect this to the Android phone and that will take care of all of my needs for APRS. Now, the one thing that these three radios have in common is they're either USB-C rechargeable or they're 12 volt rechargeable. And I was looking for a solution. When we're at these shows, it's always a problem keeping everything in my bag charged. My cell phone, my cameras, my radios, all of it's got to be recharged at least every night. Uh, but often we're recharging those items during the day. And I was looking for one device that could keep everything charged. And that's where I found this guy. But this gets even crazier here in a second. This is the Anchor 737 battery. I think it's like 24,000 milliamp hours uh, of capacity. It gives you a couple of USB-Cs and one USB-A. And with the right cables, we can use this to charge any of those three HTs. Plus it'll charge my phone, plus it'll charge my cameras, and it'll even charge my laptop. But here's where things get crazy. This battery pack will even run the FX4 CRHF radio. This is a very compact 20 watt HF radio. I believe it'll do six through 80, or maybe it's 10 through 80. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but I couldn't believe that this battery bank would actually power this radio. So once I saw everything powered up, well, I had to do a little bit more testing. So I connected up the laptop and initiated a Winry connection with this radio. Now, I did back the radio down to five watts. Uh, when I tried to push it to 10 watts, well, things got a little bit wonky with me and the screen on this radio started flickering. 
but at five watts, it was absolutely no issue whatsoever to drive this radio. Now, keep in mind that digital modes pull a lot more amperage from a radio than single sideband is ever going to. So I don't think I would have any problems running this radio at 10 or 15 watts with single sideband. So that allows me to eliminate carrying an extra lithium iron phosphate battery. Since I'm probably not going to be using the HF radio, that's one more thing I can eliminate from my luggage and still have a battery bank that if I did want to pop in and do a quick parks on the air activation, well, I've got all of the gear necessary to do it. So having one device that can perform multiple duties in my bag is definitely a winner when I'm traveling. Now, there is the other school of thought, two is one and one is none. And if this thing fails uh, running that radio, well, I'm going to be left without an HF radio. But again, since I don't think that I'm really going to be using HF, well, it's not really that big of a deal. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.